Escaping torment in the next world is dependent only upon following Hadrat Muhammad a.s. He who follows the way guided by him will obtain the love of Allah Ta'ala. Those who follow in his footsteps will be close to Allah Ta'ala. He who adapts himself to him will get the happiness of being a faithful born slave of Allah Ta'ala. The greatest ones of the more than 124,000 prophets that came to the world desired to follow him. If Hadrat Musa or Moses a.s. had lived in his time, despite his greatness, he would have preferred to follow Hadrat Muhammad a.s. All Muslims know that Hadrat Isa a.s. will descend from heaven and follow the way of Hadrat Muhammad a.s. Muslims who are of his ummah are the most auspicious and best of all people because they have adapted themselves to him. Most of those who will enter paradise are from among them, and they will enter before all other people. The Quran al-Karim is nazm e illahi divine verse. The lexical meaning of nazm is to string pearls. It has been called nazm also because words are arranged side by side like pearls. Each poem is a nazm. The Quran's words are in Arabic. However, Allah Ta'ala arranged these words side by side. These words were not arranged by any human being. When the words inspired into his blessed heart by Allah Ta'ala were spoken by him in Arabic, they were not included in the Quran al-Karim. These words are called hadith i qudsi Words in the Quran al-Karim, having been arranged by Allah Ta'ala, descended in ayats. An angel named Jabril, Gabriel, alayhi salam, recited the ayats with these words and letters, and Hadrat Muhammad, hearing them through his blessed ears, memorized them and immediately recited them to his companions. Allah Ta'ala sent the Quran in the language of the Quraysh tribe. The book Rad al-Muhtar says on the subject of oath in its third volume, as is said in the book Fath al-Qadir, Allah Ta'ala sent the Quran in words and letters. These letters are creatures. The meaning of these words and letters carries the divine word. These words and letters are called the Quran. Also, the meanings indicating the divine word are the Quran. The Quran, which is the divine word, is not a creature. It is eternal in the beginning and eternal in the end, as the other attributes of Lautala are. The Quran began to descend on the Qadr night, and it continued to descend for 23 years. As for the Taurat, the book that descended to Hadrat Musa, or Moses, alayhi salam, the Injil, the Gospel to Isa, alayhi salam, and all other books and heavenly pages, each of them had descended as a whole all at once. All of them resembled human words, and they were not miracles. For that reason, they were defiled and soon changed. But the Quran is one of the greatest miracles of Hadrat Muhammad, alayhi salam, and it is unlike human words. These facts are written in detail in the hundredth letter of the third volume of Maktubat by Imam Yurabbani and in the books Hujat Allahi Ala al Alamin and Shari Muwahib, volumes five by Zarkani. Once every year, Hadrat Jabril, Gabriel, alayhi salam, would come to our blessed Prophet, peace be upon him, and recite to him the part of the Quran that had been revealed until that moment in accordance with its order and the Laiv al Mahfuz. And our master, the prophet, would listen to it and repeat it. In the year when he, the prophet, would honor the hereafter, Jabrail salam came twice, reciting the whole of it. Hadrat Muhammad and the majority of his ashab memorized the whole Quran. Some of the ashab memorized some sections of it and wrote down most of its other sections. In the year when Hadrat Muhammad salam honored the next world with his presence, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, the Khalifa, gathered those who knew the Quran by heart, and uniting the written parts together, formed a committee to write down the whole of the Quran on paper. Thus, a book, a manuscript called a Mus'haf, was formed. 33,000 Ashab of the Prophet, peace be upon him, decided unanimously that each letter of the Mus'haf was precisely in its correct place. The surahs or chapters were not separated. Hadrat Uthman, radiallahu an, the third Khalifa, separated the surahs from one another in 25 Hijri. He put them in their order. After having six more mushafs written, he sent them to Bahrain, Damascus, Egypt, Baghdad, Kufa, Yemen, Mecca, Medina. The mushafs all over the world today have been reproduced by copying these seven. There is not even a point difference amongst them. 
There are 114 surahs or 6,236 ayats in the Quran al -Karim. There are also reports wherein the number of ayats are stated to be over or below 6,236, but these differences are because one long ayat was considered several short ayats, or a couple of short ayats were considered one long ayat, or the bismillahs before the surahs were considered to be within the surahs by some scholars and to be independent ayats by others. Detailed information exists in the book entitled Bostan ul Arafin. Each poet employs a different method for developing nazm. For example, if we take a poem which Mehmet Akif wrote towards the end of his life to an expert literary man who knows Mehmet Akif's and Nabi's poems well and tell him that this is a poem of Nabi's, though he has never heard about this poem, won't he say upon reading it, you're wrong. I know Mehmet Akif's poetic style and that of Nabi well. This poem is not Nabi's, it is Mehmet Akif's. Of course he will. As the Nazm, the arrangement of the words of the two Turkish poets are quite different from each other, likewise the Quran is unlike any human word. It has been proven through experiments that the Quran is not human words, and it can be proven any time. Let's take an example from the past. An Arabic poet wrote something displaying the delicacies of his literary art on a sheet of paper, among which he put a few lines of hadith and some at some other place an ayat dealing with the same things. Someone who knew nothing of Islam or the Quran, but who had a strong knowledge of Arabic, was told that the writings belonged to a certain person and was asked to read them all. While reading, he stopped upon the hadith and said, This part is unlike those above. There is a higher art here. When he came to the ayat, he said in a bewildered fashion, This is unlike any word. There are meanings within meanings. It is impossible to understand them all. The Quran al Karim cannot be translated into any language, even into Arabic. It is impossible to translate any poem into its own language precisely. It can only be explained, interpreted. We should not read the Quran's translations in order to understand it. To understand the meaning of an ayat means to understand what Allah Ta'ala means through this ayat. A person who reads a translation of this ayat cannot learn muradi illahi, or the divine meaning. He learns what the translator has understood according to his level of knowledge. And he who reads the translation written by someone ignorant or by an irreligious translator learns not what Allah Ta'ala says, but what the translator, who assumes that he understands it, is expressing from his own thoughts. The government does not send a law concerning villagers directly to villagers because villagers cannot understand this law, even if they can read it. This law is sent to the governors of cities first. These governors, understanding it well and adding their explanations, send it to the mayors of towns, who, explaining it more clearly, send it to directors of districts. Directors of districts can understand the law with the help of these explanations and can explain them to headmen of villages. Headmen of a village cannot have it understood just by reading it. The headman explains it to the villagers in the village dialect. By the same token, the Quran al Karim consists of divine rules. It is divine law. Allah Ta'ala has shown the way of happiness to his born slaves through the Quran al Karim and has sent his own word to the highest of mankind. Only Hadrat Muhammad salam, can understand the meaning of the Quran al Karim. No other person can understand it completely. Though the Ashabi Kiram alayhi muridwan knew Arabic as their native language and were literary and eloquent, they couldn't understand some ayats and ask Rasulullah to explain them. One day, Hazrat Umar radiallahu an saw Rasulullah wasallam, saying something to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an as he passed by them. He went near them and listened. Others also saw them, yet they hesitated to go and listen. The next day, when they saw Hadrat Umar, they said to him, O oh Umar, Rasulullah was telling you something yesterday. Tell us, so that we can know. He, the Prophet, always used to say, Tell your brothers in Islam what you hear from me. Let one another know. Hadrat Umar said, Yesterday, Abu Bakr an had asked him about the meaning of an ayat which he couldn't understand and Rasulullah was explaining it to him. I listened for an hour, but I couldn't understand anything. He was explaining everything according to the high grade of Abu Bakr. Hadar Umar was so great that Rasulullah said, I am the last prophet, no prophet will succeed me. If there were a prophet to succeed me, Umar would be that prophet. So though he was so great and knew Arabic very well, he was not able to understand even the explanation 
of the Quran. Rasulullah used to explain it according to the degree of the person he was talking to at the moment. And the degree of Abu Bakr Siddiq was much higher than that of Hadrat Umar's. But he too, and even Hadrat Jabril السلام, used to ask Rasulullah about the meaning, about the mysteries in the Quran. The book Al Hadika, while explaining the disasters incurred by one speech, communicates that Imam Suyuti wrote that Rasulullah وسلم, explained the meaning of the entire Quran to the Ashabi Kiram. Thank you.